Unfortunately, there is just no easy way to learn the classification of the various DNA and RNA viruses besides memorization. A good way to approach this is by focusing on characteristics that several viruses share in common, and remember the exceptions to those rules. Some of these shared features and exceptions are listed here for DNA viruses. This table is provided to further help you learn the general features that differentiate DNA and RNA viruses that may appear on step one. However, don't spend too much time learning these as it is not high yield. Again, focus on big picture characteristics that several viruses share and also know the exceptions. The DNA viruses include herpes virus, hepatovirus, adenovirus, parvovirus, papillomavirus, polyomavirus, and poxvirus. Herpes virus is a family of viruses that include HSV1, HSV2, VZV, EBV, CMV, HHV6, HHV7, and HHV8. Most adults are infected with HSV1, acquired through saliva transmission, but which usually results in an asymptomatic infection. Initial symptoms may include vesicular ulcerating lesions of the mouth, gingivo stomatitis, the eye keratoconjunctivitis, or the hand herpetic whitlow, as shown in this image. HSV1 is the most common cause of sporadic temporal lobe encephalitis in the U.S., which presents with fever, headache, neck stiffness, and olfactory hallucinations. HSV1 can be latent in trigeminal nerve ganglia and reactivate during periods of stress or immunocompromised states. Reactivation presents as herpes labialis, or cold sores, around the mouth. Herpes simplex virus 2 is transmitted by sexual contact, and most infections are asymptomatic. HSV2 may present with vesicular ulcerating lesions of the genital or perianal areas. Remember that HSV2 is one of the torches infections and can affect neonates via transplacental transmission or during delivery. Cesarean section is indicated for mothers with active HSV infections. HSV2 remains latent in sacral ganglia and can reactivate under stressful conditions, resulting in genital lesions. VZV infection is responsible for varicella, chickenpox, and zoster, shingles. In children, VZV causes a mild flu-like illness with characteristic skin lesions described as dew drops on a rose petal. These lesions start out as papules on a macular erythematous base that fasciculate, become pustules, and release viral particles during rupture. Chickenpox lesions will appear as multiple lesions at different stages of infection, some papules, some vesicles, some pustules, etc and typically resolve after a few weeks. VZV infection in adults is much more serious and can lead to pneumonia and encephalitis. Therefore, it was well known that contracting VZV at an early age was more desirable to becoming infected as an adult. This reasoning formed the basis for chickenpox parties, where uninfected friends and classmates were encouraged to gather in one area and contract varicella from an infected child through contact with this highly contagious virus. VZV remains latent in trigeminal and dorsal root ganglia, with reactivation leading to a painful vesicular skin lesion known as herpes zoster or shingles, usually in immunocompromised individuals such as the elderly. The key to diagnosing shingles is to look for painful vesicular lesions in a unilateral dermatomal distribution without crossing the midline. EBV is the cause of infectious mononucleosis, better known as just mono, Burkitt's lymphoma, and nasopharyngeal carcinoma. We'll discuss it in more detail shortly. Cytomegalovirus, or CMV, is another herpes virus. Key things to remember are that it is the cause of neonatal infections, or the C in torches, and that it is often transmitted to transplant recipients. In adults, CMV can cause a disease similar to mono, but with a negative monospot test. No heterophil antibodies are formed. In newborn, CMV can cause cytomegalic inclusion disease with symptoms such as petechial rash, seizures, hearing loss, and other CNS deficits. Diagnosis is made by seeing infected mononuclear cells with owl's eye inclusions. HHV6 can cause roseola, characterized by high fevers and a diffuse red macular rash. HHV8 causes Kaposi sarcoma in HIV patients and results in angioproliferative lesions. Do you remember which zoonotic bacterium causes a disease that presents with angioproliferative lesions indistinguishable from Kaposi sarcoma? Right, that is bacillary angiomatosis caused by Bartonella hensleyi in immunocompromised hosts.
You will recall that biopsy is needed to determine the causative agent. We'll talk about hepatitis B in greater detail as it appears on page 191. For now, you should know that there are five hepatitis viruses, A, B, C, D, and E. Hepatitis B is the only DNA virus, while the others, A, C, D, and E, are RNA viruses. More on that later. Adenovirus is a DNA virus with well over 40 different serotypes, accounting for a variety of clinical manifestations, such as non-purulent conjunctivitis, pharyngitis, rhinitis, which causes common cold symptoms, hematuria due to hemorrhagic cystitis, dysuria, non-bloody diarrhea, gastroenteritis, and atypical pneumonia. Parvovirus is the smallest clinically important virus, measuring only 20 to 25 nanometers. It is responsible for one of the five most common causes of pediatric rashes, known as erythema infectiosum, which also goes by fifth disease or slap cheek rash. As you can see from the picture, the name comes from the bright red rash that appears on the cheeks of infected children, along with a lacy red rash on the rest of the body. HPV is a member of the papillomavirus family and infects squamous cells of the skin or mucous membrane with different clinical presentations depending on the strain. Benign strains include HPV 1, 2, 6, and 11, which can cause common skin warts on the face, feet, and under the nails. HPV 6 and 11 account for 90% of cases of anogenital warts. Papilloma warts regress spontaneously after 1 to 2 years. The more high-risk sexually transmitted strains include HPV 16 and 18 and can lead to cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, which is a potentially pre-malignant dysplasia of squamous cells in the cervix. CIN is usually curable through resection, although a very small percentage can go on to become cancerous, therefore regular pap smears are necessary for monitoring. HPV 16 and 18 cause most of HPV-associated cervical cancers. There are currently two HPV vaccines which both protect against HPV 16 and 18. JC virus is a polyoma virus named for the initials of the patient who was found to have PML or progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. JC virus is genetically similar to another polyoma virus called BK virus, which causes renal disease in immunocompromised patients and is extremely common in the general population. In fact, most people are asymptomatic carriers of JC virus by the age of 18. JC virus becomes pathological only in immunocompromised individuals, such as those with AIDS, on chemotherapy, or immunosuppressants. Reactivated JC virus causes PML, a demyelinating disease which destroys oligodendrocytes in the CNS and leads to speech, coordination, and memory deficits. Finally, pox virus is the largest human virus and replicates in the cytoplasm. Pox virus was responsible for smallpox, a once devastating infection causing maculopapular skin lesions that later became raised fluid-filled blisters. Smallpox was responsible for approximately 500 million deaths during the 20th century. However, thanks to the success of vaccination programs, smallpox was entirely eradicated from the human population in 1977. Today, pox virus can be seen as the cause of molluscum contagiosum, a self-limited infection that causes flesh-colored papules to appear on the skin. The virus is transmitted by close contact, and a key feature to recognizing it is a central dimple or umbilication of papules. We've already spoken about the herpes viruses in the DNA virus section, with the exception of EBV, Epstein-Barr virus, which is coming up. Use this table to refresh your memory about each of the viruses, the diseases they cause, route of transmission, and the ganglia that they remain latent in. Sank smear identifies HSV1, HSV2, and VZV by looking for multinucleated giant cells found in these infections and which are shown here in these images. Skin biopsy can also be performed with the presence of intranuclear inclusion bodies pathognomonic for HSV or VZV infection. EBV is best known for causing mono, which has also been referred to as a kissing disease because it is commonly transmitted through saliva in teenagers between 15 and 20 years old. In mono, you will see fever, hepatosplenomegaly, pharyngitis, and lymphadenopathy. Diagnosis can be made in one of two ways, atypical lymphocytes on blood smear or a positive monospot test. The atypical lymphocytes are really normal, reactive T-cells that look strange because they are responding to EBV-infected B-cells. They are shown in this image here. 
Monospot test looks for agglutination of animal RBCs when patient serum is mixed with animal blood. This is because a person with mono will form what is known as heterophile antibodies that are attracted to blood that is different from humans, which is where the name heterophile comes from. Hetero meaning different and phile meaning love. As we mentioned, EBV is also associated with Burkitt's lymphoma and nasopharyngeal carcinoma.